Hey everyone, welcome back. My grip on the flashlight becomes sweaty. What the fuck am I gonna do against her this time? That's... What did I do, what did I do last time? I... I just had to behave, right? Diamond takes a step back. Other, oh, she's not gonna say the rest. Other people are unnecessary. You're the only one I wanna see, sir. I don't like gross or scary things. Wait, you're saying Daimon is gross or scary? She's calling me sir again. Sensei. She seems like she'll listen to what I have to say. I should try asking her something. I should try asking her something this time. Something, anything really. I just need a clue. Anything that can help save Hiro, who's suffering in pain at this very moment. Okay. Mind made up. I take a deep breath, but. Ugh. Diamond stumbles over something and falls. Hey, are you okay? Sorry, nothing wrong. Hmm? Diamond falls silent as he tries to stand. I look over at him and immediately see it. The thing Diamond stumbled over is... Oh shit! No! He needs to be okay! Diamond instinctively scrambles back. What is that? Wait, is she some kind of spider lady? Something that looks like a giant cocoon is sticking to the floor. I can see a scarf and head entangled in the glittering thread. They look familiar. It can't be. I mean, it's pretty obvious it's him. Benji! Old oh, man, you're kidding! No way, Masaka! Benji, can you hear me? Please say something. Oh, he's still alive. He's still awake. I hear a muffled voice from the co cocoon. He's alive! Oh, gross. Spiders. I quickly move to shoo them away, but I see a red figure out of the corner of my eye. Ooh, she's so close! And she has sexy lips. Gah. Ella? Ella? What? Diamond's so panicked he's unintelligible, but I know what he's trying to say. Escaping to the elevator is our only choice. Oh. Go! Go! Together we rip Banshee up off the floor. Oh, we get him? Carrying him like a log, we stumble to the elevator. Gee, we got him out of there? Holy shit. We fall into the elevator and I repeatedly slam the button on the first floor. Banshee, can you hear me? Hey, say something. Diamond tries to give Banshee medical treatment. Damn it, he's no longer responding. His body's going rigid. As Diamond focuses on helping Banshee, I see something black squirming by his shoulder. Spiders? Diamond! Ooh, fuck. Are they biting him? I blink and suddenly the entire elevator is filled with wriggling shadows. They come in one after another. Fuck. Okay. Swarm of spiders is coming in, what do I do? I would... F finding the source doesn't really help, because they're still on him. And the other one... What was the other one? Fuck. The spiders visi visibly stopped moving for a moment. That was okay. Why would spiders react to yelling? They're still coming. We need something stronger. The massager, really? The vibrations, right? I paid attention for a, for a change. Take the massager out of my bag, press it against the wall and turn it on. A growling vibration runs through the walls. Spiders suddenly start acting strangely. Because Daimon was the one who was like, they don't like vibrations, like that's why they're not near motors and stuff. I actually remember. Because I re recorded it like yesterday. <laughs> that really helps. Creatures vanish instantly, as if they'd only been a mirage. What's going on? Are we safe yet? I was desperate, but I can't believe that thing had a big enough vibration to scare them. As I'm puzzling out why... Something slams into the elevator door hard. Hurry up and get the- <laughs> Right, I need to hit a button. Go for one? I already pushed the button a ton of times. Press the button for the first floor again. It only clicks. The metal box is stranding us. Why isn't it moving? 
And there she is. We haven't heard Daimon's voice that, that often. I'm like, oh, I don't know this voice. It's obvious who she is. Move, move, move! I pray silently as I jam the button. Then... <gasps> use the key on the... Can we finally use the key? Oh, it worked. Okay. We're good. We stumble out of the elevator without checking to see where we've stopped. Isn't on the sixth floor? Oh, lounge. First floor lobby. Did we escape? Yeah. I mean, she can come right down if she wants to. For whatever reason, the elevator decided to move at the very last second. I doubt my praying actually worked, but... I'm not sure what happened, but I think we're safe. I breathe a sigh of relief. Isn't it breathe with an E? I'm detecting more and more spelling errors. And the figure appears in the gloom. Hey, Eita! Why were you guys in there? Eita? You're both covered in sweat. Sweaty boys. Did something happen? Of course something... Wait, Eita, did you call the elevator down here? What? Yeah, I mean, it looked like it worked, so I... Did I do something wrong? No, you saved us! Ada holds himself back timidly. It sounds like he thinks I'm mad at him. Daimon silently steps up to him. Is he gonna give him a hug? Then suddenly gives him a hug! Yeah! <laughs> thank you, thank you, Ada. Well done. If you hadn't been here, we would've... True, you couldn't ask for better timing. I can't be more grateful that Suza contacted Ada. What's most important right now is getting Banshee to safety. He needs emergency treatment. Come help me with him, Ada. Okay. Completely clueless, Ada helps us drag the white lump out of the elevator. What is this creepy thing? I hesitate for a moment before I reply. But he should know. Banshee Ito. The old man from the underground shelter. Wait, he doesn't know him, does he? Idiot, don't drop him. Did they meet? I don't remember them meeting before. I don't get back to Kujo Mansion until almost midnight. How's Benchy? My exhausted body groans in pain as I collapse onto the sofa. My head feels heavy, like it's in a fog. To top it off, things are worse than yesterday now. Banshee was sent to Daimon's hospital and immediately admitted. He's no longer conscious and untrained eyes would say he's just sleeping, but... He's actually fallen into a deep coma. His condition is very serious. <laughs> to be honest, I wanted to go along and do something to help, but... Daimon chased me out of the hospital. He said I'm overworked and sleep deprived. Ada stayed behind at least. Not that he's replacing me, but it's good he's there. I'm frustrated with myself for thinking he'd be useless. Once everything is over, I definitely need to thank Suzu. Damn. First Hito and now Banshee. At this rate, even, I, if, even if I keep investigating, if I don't find any clues, thinking about it makes my stomach hurt. Those two might never recover. And that's just assuming their conditions stabilize. If they get worse, something even more terrible could happen. Put my head in my hands and sigh. The red raincoat flashes in the darkness. What should I do? How do I? I have to keep investigating tomorrow. Once I finish looking through these documents, I should head straight to bed. Is it gonna fall asleep on the documents? Okay. Do we go to sleep with talk? Yeah, rest. I have to go investigate again tomorrow. I need to go to bed early and rest. Shit, poor Banshee. I liked him more than Hito, so... And Hito seems sort of fine. Like, Banshee, I'm like, he's poisoned, probably. Spider bites and stuff. Early morning, and I get the worst wake-up call ever. Oh, don't tell me someone died. A severe pain threatens to split my head. The mysterious headache from yesterday is back with a vengeance. I meant to go to Daimon's hospital to see Hiro and Banshee while it was light out. Ugh. Spots flash before my eyes. I can't even sit up. What the fuck is wrong with you, dude? 
Pull the sheets up and wait for it to pass. Don't make me worry now. I'm worried that it has some like kind of head tumor or something. Brain tumor, I mean. I'm only just able to move by the time the sun is setting. Jesus, dude. Thunder rumbles in the distance. Sounds like rain again. What do we got? Why are we getting sick? Great. I press my fingers to my temple to check. The whirlwind of pain has once again disappeared without a trace. I sigh. Jesus, that's loud. Masha calls as I'm making coffee in the kitchen. He says he'll come along for tonight's investigation! Yay! He must have finally wrapped up his other cases. Nice. He mentioned that he dropped by the hospital in between cases to see Hiro and Banshee. Seems they went berserk when they awoke and are now restrained. They refuse to eat. Relying on IVs won't work forever. I didn't expect the report to be good, but well, at least they're awake. This is a critical point in the case. Before he hangs up, Mashta utters a warning. warning. Then this is the 11th hour. Mashta doesn't offer a reply. The red lights outside the rain-soaked window are hazy like a wilting flower. It's time to head out. Nice. Save that shit! I don't know what, what's wrong with my brain. I hope it's really just exhaustion, but it sounds like something supernatural. I park the car in the parking lot, as always, and walk over to the street in the rain. I pass down the familiar road to hotel. To the hotel. Oof, he's angry. Man in a trench coat cuts an imposing figure on the wet street corner, glittering in lights. You know, damn well time is of the essence right now. Daimon's prepared for the worst, too. He's made arrangements to transfer them. Transfer them? Oh, in case something happens to him. They must be in pretty bad condition, then. And I didn't mention this over the phone, but I met someone at Daimon's hospital. I ran into Sho Nagashima. Oh, the punk! Sho? What was he doing there? Some of his gang hangs out there. Guess we're a hot topic with them. They've seen people in and out of the hotel. Nagashima heard about it and figured they were talking about you. He contacted the fortune teller and, well... So now Sho knows about the case too. Everyone's coming by! Why didn't she just keep quiet? The old lady hang hands out business cards to anyone and everyone. It's a real pain. So did you talk to Sho? Why would I? He courted me asking for info on the case, but I drove him off. He's followed you. I suddenly feel uneasy. You didn't say anything unnecessary, did you? Of course not. Just said to stay out, out of grown-up matters. For just a moment, my vision tunnels and a blood vessel in my head throbs. Something wrong? No, I'm fine. Hiding it won't do you well. I'm sure he doesn't want Sho involved either, but he really should have considered his words more carefully. I hear footsteps coming up behind me. Oh, there he is! Can't be Sho, right? I raise my head with a sudden sense of dread. Oh, Moe Watanabe! Thank goodness you're here after all. Good thing I came straight here. I got the results you asked me for. Results? I looked at her blankly for a moment. Then I remember I asked her to use connections to investigate the rumors. Ah, oh, right, thanks. There's no time, give us the short version. Okay, then I'll only cover the really important parts. I heard something amazing from someone who was, he who was there at the time. Like a hotel employee? No, not like that, jeez. When I saw someone who was there, when I say that, I obviously mean one of the high school girls who was up to no good. Ooh, you talked to one? This is legit, right? Even much as interested. Only the people who use Masquerade really know what happened there. Hearing from someone involved is best. Yeah, her name is Ako. Wait, that is actually her name? The editorial department helped me track her down. She went to a nearby high school and did this part-time job, apparently. What's really important is what Ako said about her... Oh, classmate Esco. Oh, okay, so that's why they... Okay, so... They're just keeping, like, the names anonymous. Like, they're, ha like they're 
like how they're saying like H Forest or H Town, H High School. It's like the A kid and the S kid, I think. If it's like the Japanese Eiko and Esko. Moe pulls a voice recorder from her bag and hits the play button. Can we actually hear it? That would be cool. A friend introduced me to a part-time job. It was whimsical. I, uh, I mean, I just did it on a whim. So we're supposed to meet at, a, at that hotel, Masquerade. And there's a system there where someone introduces us to customers. You get a lot of money from it, so everyone was dying to get hired. But one day there was like an incident? Someone at school found out about the job. Some goody two shoes class rep Esko said she was gonna tell her teacher and Mura. Yeah, so Nakamura, probably. Sadako Nakamura, something like that. And then they take out the middle part or something um, to make it anonymous. Everyone freaked and apologized to her, saying they'd stop. She wouldn't listen. If our parents find out, found out, it would be the worst thing ever. We begged, but she didn't budge. In the end, she left class saying she was going to go to the police with Enmura. We were totally freaking out, so I went to the hotel that night. I mean, at that point there was no harm in going, you know? <laughs> found out anyway. But then she was there. Esko was standing in front of Masquerade in the drizzling rain. In a red raincoat. Oh, so it's the goody two-shoes! She'd said she was going to the police, so who knows why she was at the hotel. That makes sense, because why us men have to be like saying like we're not interested in that kind of stuff we're just here because our wives are here or something like that it made us all jumpy and on edge every day after that except nothing ever happened soon after that masquerade shut down i guess they uncovered something the job yeah i completely quit after that <laughs> That's Eiko's testimony. Just the important parts, though. Moe got a fascinating first-hand account. The rumors of Red Riding Hood and what was written in the guest books we found in the hotel. All the pieces are in that girl's confession. So what en ended up happening to Esko? I don't know exactly, but apparently she stopped coming to school. I'm just gonna call her Sadako, just just so we have something easier to pronounce and that other teacher is just gonna be uh, Nakamura. And then this girl will call... Uh, Ayako? No. Amako? What's a common name? Starting with an A, ending with Ko. Amako? Adako? Asako? What a name? Check. It doesn't even matter, but it needs to sound right in my head. Yes, let's call her Asako. That works. Asako and Sadako. According to Asako, she just suddenly stopped showing up. Mashita snorts. <laughs> he snorts. <laughs> Too perfect. She was probably just being overly dramatic. Especially that part about the red raincoat. Most people use an umbrella when it's raining. That's true. Especially in Japan. You hardly ever see a raincoat. That's true. Masha's right. It's possible that the raincoat was a sign for whoever she was waiting for, but... Hardly anyone comes down this street. It doesn't really fit. Is that all you have to tell us? Then hurry up and go home. So I really can't come with you? No, definitely not. I worked really hard, you know. You did, but girls are in danger of getting possessed. Moe really wants to come along. I do feel bad. She worked and got us that info just so she could investigate with us. But... Sorry, but you shouldn't be here. There have already been two victims. We can't get you wrapped up in this too. <sighs> okay, I understand. Moe nods. I guess she's already over it. No. Yeah. She sounds worried about me. She disappears around the street corner. Okay. Siren echoes on the wind. In the wind? And a natural howl in the distance. I look up th at the masquerade lo looming before us. What in the hell happened inside that hunk of concrete? 
There's always a tragic cause to the birth of a spirit. Red Riding Hood must be the same. But I can't watch my friends die. I slowly step forward, trying to escape from the une unease that's tr threatening to engulf me. It's not right for the dead to meddle with the living. Mashta mutters beside me. Is that a personal creed? Nah, just what I think. Mashta clicks her tongue. Clicks his tongue. Sorry. Okay, Asako's testimony. Can I... I've always wondered, actually. How do I... No. How do I open the files? There's a way to open it, isn't there? Bag memo. Hmm, and that's this one. Oh, what is this? So it's just the recap you can read. She witnessed Esko Sadako standing in front of the hotel in a red raincoat. She's told Asako she was she has she had told Asako she was going to the police, so why was she there? After that night Sadako stopped coming to school and for some reason the police never got involved. Hmm. Why in the world didn't As Sadako go to the police? I don't know. Let's go in. Hey. As I step into the lobby, Mashta stops in front of me. What's wrong? What a fantastic job you've done here. What are you talking about? Look. Oh. Was this the way it actually looked? The lobby looks completely different. The room is covered in white. It's all spider webs. It wasn't like this yesterday. Thought so. These are webs? Mustra touches one of the floating threads. Looks like she's up the ante. Bring it. Ta time to make our appointment with our lady friend. Are we gonna take the elevator straight away? The groan of the elevator moving echoes. Oh my god! Is she coming out? Did the elevator just come back to the first floor? That would mean... Someone's already here. Did you see which floor it came from? No, I wasn't looking. Though I feel like it took a while between when I heard the noise and its arrival. Benning it's one of the upper floors. It has to be. Fourth or fifth. Yesterday we got the elevator working and managed to get to the fourth, fourth floor. But because of what happened to Banshee, we weren't able to investigate any higher. Let's start on the fourth. You got it. Got in the elevator! Well, floor it is. The death floor. Let's see what we can find. Let's check out the painting. Masquerade wife. Picture of a masked girl running down a trail. Girl. I really need to start writing these down cuz I don't I'm not going to remember the order. Uh let's open up a note. So, fourth floor has a masked girl. Okay. Let's check left first. Ugh, I hate those fucking masks. Venetian wall, mask on the wall. Pick the mask up and find a talisman. Oh, nice. Oh, there's two masks on this one. Another cabinet. Chest with a vase on top. It's made out of wood, but it isn't broken. Whatever is inside is probably still intact. Is it locked? No. Oh. Pull open the drawer and find... Notebook. Nice. Mask guestbook 401. What's that? Guestbook provided by the hotel. Guests write about their experiences in it. I glance through the pages. Sorry for the hiccups. This guestbook's entries are clearly different from all the other ones. It covers a number of horrifying topics such as devil worship and different kinds of torture. Every page is cramped with stuff like that. 
It's impossible to tell which ones are delusions and which one actually took place. The only thing I can say for sure is that it's surging with a twisted, single-minded appetite. I silently hand over the guest book. Masta skims through it and then smirks. Huh, that's quite the hobby. The handwriting differs by page. This was written by several guests. I find that hard to believe. I sincerely doubt there are so many people in the world who have such a unique hobby. Ah, you'd be surprised. They're like moths drawn to a flame. You wouldn't even know how to look at them. The pieces are finally coming together. Seems this hotel offered a special service for, a per for its perverted guests. Gross, you mean... The kind of stuff written in that guest book. Yeah, the kids working that part-time job were probably part of it too. Jeez. Guaranteed their safety and complete confidentiality, of course. After all, the one who sold his soul was probably most nervous about that. What? These people have quite the imagination. Mashta mutters sarcastically, sarcastically as he casually leaves through the pages. Then he stops. Hey, this phrase, do you know what it means? The phrase Mashta's pointing to is... Jorogumo's punishment. Jorogumo, huh? It's a spider monster from Japanese folklore that can shapeshift into a beautiful woman. Ah... So you do know about it. Thanks so much for the info dump. I ignore the hint of sarcasm in his voice and read the rest of the page. Jorogumo's punishment is a recreation of a certain urban legend. You captured the largest spider you can find. A wild one would be best. Sharpen the sacrifice's senses with drugs and use a, sm a mouth speculum to keep their mouth open. <gasps> then throw the spider into their mouth. What the fuck? God, I would fucking die of stress. If they manage to swallow it, they're innocent. If they don't or the spider escapes, they're guilty. What the fuck? It's a witch trial meant to judge truth from lie. Jesus. If I get a sacrifice that needs punishing, I'd like to try it out immediately. What? God, that that one is too far for me. This and the B chapter kind of are the best ones for me. It can't be that what's written here was actually... Did someone actually do this? Who knows? Hey, calm down. Take a deep breath. Yeah, it's okay. I'm calm. Just thinking about spiders in my mouth. I doubt Mashta believes me. It's obvious that I'm totally rattled. Don't forget, Gabu. We can't die here. Of course, I know that. Try to keep my reply as steady as possible, but my hands keep shake my hands keep shaking as I put the guest book in my bag. Poor dude. Anything on the bed? No. Ceiling. Large air conditioning unit attached to the ceiling. Stained but it but would likely likely work with electricity. Jesus! She was right there! Wait, can I turn it on? Because I did fix a box. Oh, but not on this floor. Check behind the wire door. Folding table and chair stored away. Too big to carry around. Open the door to the bathroom. Anything here? Oh, a bin. Trash can with a lid. Turn it upside down and shake it. A lot of paper. Talisman, okay. Mirror? Mirror, mirror on the wall! Some kind of slime is stuck to the mirror, so my reflection is hard to see. Slime? Really? Why? Nothing there, nothing there. I guess that was it. Oh. Brand new spider webs. Was this web built last night? Now even perfectly normal spider webs are starting to look eerie. They're always kind of eerie, dude. Uh, oh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted this. Tiny bit early, but I am going to cut it here. Because um, this is a nice safe moment to save. Ha 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 ha. Safe moment to save. Get it? Um, I'll definitely check all the paintings again, add them to my note as we go, and um, see what's on all the other floors in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching till the end, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!